Today in the news, we talk AMD. Yep, that's pretty much it. I couldn't come up with anything else. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. So, let's get into it. Mainstream Ryzen 3000 has definitely made its impact. You got up to 16 really high performance cores at under 800 bucks, and it beats everything the uh, competition has to offer. Not only that, but you have Threadripper forging a class of its own on the HEDT platform with 24, 32, and an incoming 64 core CPU. So what's next? 128 cores on a single CPU? Well, maybe for Epic, but I'm just speculating here. What I wonder about is the mainstream platform. With the 3950X, we should have enough cores to last for years. So do we really need more? I'm not sure, but AMD seems to think so. During an interview with Tom's Hardware, Mark Papermaster, cool name, AMD's CTO, was asked if it would make sense for the mainstream platform, so we're talking only Ryzen 3, 5, 7, and 9, just to be clear, if it would make sense for the mainstream to move up to, let's say, 32 cores. Here's what he had to say. I don't see in the mainstream space any imminent barriers, and here's why. It's just a catch-up time for software to leverage the multi-core approach. But we're over that hurdle. Now more and more applications can take advantage of multi-core and multi-threading. Essentially, he sees no stopping to the multi-core train, and I personally agree. We've had 10 plus core CPUs in homes for half a decade, and software developers have been very slowly, but very surely, optimizing for it. The recent jump to 18 cores from Intel in 2017 definitely pushed intensive apps to be optimized. To that point, he added, you have to be very thoughtful when you add cores because you don't want to add it before the applications can take advantage of it. As long as you keep that balance, I think we'll continue to see that trend. Once again, I agree. Now, should we expect a 32 core mainstream CPU with, let's say, Zen 3? I don't think so, personally. AMD has changed their design for Zen 3, so I think we're going to see the same product stack, but with improvements in clock speeds and especially in IPC. Papermaster was also asked if processors would get slower as they shrink from now on. We're talking about frequency here. You see, we're now at 7 nanometers, at least for AMD. And theoretically, going down in process nodes should always allow for frequency improvements. But Papermaster answered, Moore's Law is slowing because the frequency scaling opportunities at every node is either a very small percentage or nil going forward. Let me add to that, you have to look at the Foundry's way of actually manufacturing and producing the chips. 7 nanometers for TSMC is not the same as 7 nanometers for Samsung or Intel, if theirs ever comes out. So a step down in process node has a lot of different moving pieces that influence the final performance. He also added that this is the reason that they created the Infinity Fabric, to stop relying on the process node shrink. Think about it, it makes sense. With the Fabric, you can make a CPU that has great performance in x86 instructions on one die, on another you have a design that excels at floating point compute, and on another, a dedicated AI accelerator. Think NVIDIA's RTX Turing die, but on separate chiplets. Another point which has been discussed during the interview is SMT4, the possibility of running four threads on one core on AMD processors. We heard rumors that Zen 3 would feature the technology, but Mark seems to be rejecting the idea and thinks that it's a little too niche. He even said that clearly there are some workloads that benefit from it, but there are so many others that it wouldn't even be deployed. I agree, let's focus on core count and frequencies first. Mark Papermaster. This man has been AMD CTO for so long, from their downfall to their rise back from the ashes. I mean, he saw the $2 stock prices. I just want to give him a simple congratulatory clap. Thank you very much. Moving on, and wow, that was a long segment, we got AMD again. So the RX 5500 XT is supposedly going to be revealed slash launched on December 12th, that's next week. Something we weren't sure about was the specs. Thanks to the RX 5500 non-XT OEM version getting reviewed left and right, we assumed that the 5500 XT would offer a little more oomph, more compute units or something similar. Well, according to a report from videocards.com, the 5500 
XT will feature 22 compute units and 1408 stream processors, exactly the same amount as the non-XT version, which is odd. I mean, there is a 5500M out there with the full 24 CUs of Navi 14, but it seems like it's exclusive to Apple. In any case, AMD's marketing materials on the RX 5500 series has been a pretty big shit show since the announcement. So maybe the non-XT gets four gigabytes of memory and the XT gets eight. If not, then they better crank that clock speed on the XT version. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel right here. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh, yeah, I'm back again. I haven't slept all night. I'm going kind of crazy and it's snowing outside.